So I'm going to go through some of the ranges that you guys can be focusing on for blood tests. So if you go to get your hormones checked, which I always recommend doing, get your gut checked, get your hormones checked, then get an naturopath, get a functional medicine doctor, get whatever. Or you don't have to, you can read them yourselves, right? But if you know how to, these kind of things, just getting these checkups, it's not because there's something wrong necessarily. You're getting a checkup, you're checking in with yourself, even with this episode, to just make sure that you're doing everything in your power to feel your best. Because I like feeling my best and I hate when I feel shitty, right? Okay, so in terms of THS, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone, side note though, you also wanna be looking at T3 and reverse T3, not just THS. Not going to it, but don't just look at THS because THS can sometimes give you the wrong, like it's not fully the truth because of how THS is. Anyway, okay, so for your THS, you want 0.3 to 2.5 milli international units per liter. Okay, so 0.3 to 2.5. And these ranges are important because very often, and I won't speak for every country, but I know for Australia, I'm pretty sure America. The range is made up of the average of people. So if you have a sick community and then the range is made, the range is made based on the sick community. What the fuck? It's not made based on the healthiest human. So these ranges are better. And obviously with something like THS, you want to have a functioning thyroid. You want to have a good, strong thyroid. So being on a little bit of a lower end of the spectrum is a better thing, right? So that your thyroid is operating quickly. So your metabolism is going. So you're not getting cold feet, cold hands, hair thinning, etc. cetera. Um, estradiol. Estradiol. So if you are perimenopausal, I'm sorry, if you're premenopausal, right before you go into menopause, on day three of your cycle is when you want to get tested and you want to have less than 80 picograms per milliliter. If you're not, if you're in like, you know, you have a healthy cycle, et cetera, you're not premenopausal. On day 14 of your cycle, go to get your hormones checked, get a blood test. This is not saliva, by the way, this is blood. So day 14, and you have to play around with blood because you want to go on different days of your cycle. So day 14, you want 150 to 350, 350 picograms per milliliter. So on day 14, you want 150 to 350 picograms per milliliter. Post-menopause, you want greater than 50 picograms per milliliter because you want to make sure that you have enough for brain health and bone health. Okay, for progesterone, in your luteal phase, you need to go. So between days... You know, if you can go like day 22, that's really ideal, but obviously it depends when you ovulate. So I ovulate day 18 generally. So if I was to get my blood done, I want to go get it done on day 23, 24, because I have about a 30 day cycle. So full body your phase four progesterone, you want 15 to 33 nanograms per milliliter. For testosterone, I'm going to do women and men. For women, you want 20 to 75 picograms per milliliter. You can go anytime in your cycle. And for men, you want 400 to 1,000 picograms per milliliter. So, I mean, they're right, like right there and just seeing that testosterone should be a proof, like proof enough to really realize everybody that men and women are very different, right? Because our hormones play a very large, very large component in how it is that we act day to day. So some of the biggest hormonal disruptors that you can start to eliminate ASAP to help you to make sure that you are feeling on point. And don't forget, if you've eliminated everything, if you've done all the things, you've taken all the supplements and your acne isn't go away, going away, your PCOS isn't going away. And remember, there's four different types of PCOS. So make sure you listen to that podcast as well. Go in the podcast directory, control F, command F, whatever you're on, like Mac or Dell PC, uh, control F PCOS. And go listen to that episode where I talk about the different types of PCOS to make sure that you're actually doing the right thing. Um, so some of the biggest hormonal disruptors, and you want to make sure that you're eliminating these. And if you have and nothing's working and you've done all the other things, then it definitely could be an energetic thing. So then reach out to me.